Hey guys, my name is Jason with Non-Baker Mining Metals, and on today's video, we're going to be trying to recover the gold plating off these rings. All right, so here's a little bit closer look at these things. The story here is that these were imported rings, and they're gold plated, but apparently there is too much lead in these to go for sale in the U.S. And so, supposedly, they're... Uh, they're gold plated. I don't know if that's 24 karat or 14 karat or what, but they're supposed to be about 1% gold in these, about 50% lead, then about equal parts copper and nickel. So um, I'm going to do my best here to try and come up with a solution for this guy to recover the gold off these rings. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to try and uh, do kind of a, a faux assay on these things. And so I'm going to take a couple of them and I'm just going to cupel them in our furnace and try and oxidize all the base metals and see how much gold, uh, see how much our gold button weighs. So to get these things weighed, I just want to weigh a couple of them, make sure they're all about the same weight. It doesn't look like they are. This one's 5.8 grams or so. This one is 5.5 grams. Let's try another one. 5.6 grams. All right, so they're all uh, a little bit different weight, which is um, concerning. You'd think if they were just producing these rings mass, they'd all be the same weight. Um, but let's take, I don't know, three. How much do we have here? 16.7 grams. I'll try and cupel these three rings and recover the gold off them, and then we can do our uh, our calculation. So 16.7 grams, we should end up with 0.167 grams of gold, a little gold bead from these three rings. So this is called a cupel, spelled C-U-P-E-L, and this is something that uh, fire assays, uh, fire assayers use for recovering the gold when they assay a uh, gold ore. And what we're going to do is we're going to use them uh, to oxidize all the base metals and get our precious metal beads. So I'm going to mix some bismuth in here with these. The bismuth is going to melt. It'll alloy with the rings and it'll form a liquid molten puddle in the bottom of this cupel. We're going to get it up to about 1800, maybe 1900 degrees with the nickel. And at that temperature, the bismuth oxidizes in the air in the furnace, the oxides become molten and flow off the bead that we create, or the, the button, the molten button here, and they're absorbed by this cupel, and the molten liquid metal stays uh, impervious to the, the, the cupel is impervious to the metal. So the, the liquid metal stays, this thing absorbs the oxides, and as the bismuth keeps shedding its oxides, it takes with it the copper, the lead, and the nickel, hopefully, and we will end up with a little tiny gold bead in the bottom of this cupel when we're done. So I'll get the, the furnace over there set up, and we can uh, see how that thing works. All right, here's our uh, haggard little electric furnace here. And I'm going to place our cupel in there, empty. And you want to get it warmed up and dried out as best you can before you put any metals in there. So I'm going to get it up to temperature, probably about 1,700 degrees, and then I'll place our three rings in there along with some of the bismuth and uh, we'll show you that process and show you how it melts down and oxidizes the base metals away. So I haven't even added any any uh, bismuth yet, and the rings are already decomposing at about 1,400 degrees. So they must have a lot of lead in them, or some low melting point metal to have them melt down at 1,400 degrees. All right, the next thing we're going to try is we're just going to melt some of these down 
and uh, get them all as a as a combined alloy. And then I'm going to take them over to my recycling yard and get them uh, analyzed with their XRF. Um, and that'll tell us the, the true percentage of each metal in these rings. So let's get some weighed out. I'll melt them down in our little furnace in a crucible like this. And we can get them poured in um, a little mold. And then we can take the mold over and get them analyzed. All right, we've got just over 67 grams in here. So we'll get it in the furnace and melt it down and see what we get. All right, here's a little furnace we're going to use. This is just a, a wrap of kale wool held together by some baling wire uh, and some kale wool on top. I've got some fire bricks down there in the bottom that uh, hold our crucibles. I've got a little uh, injector here. This black hose goes up to a propane bottle that I keep in water when I'm running. That helps keep the ice off and keeps the propane moving. And this blue hose goes up to a little shop vac I have set up as a blower to introduce more oxygen in so you can get complete combustion. And this thing gets uh, up to about 22, 2300 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, it hopefully will easily melt the stuff or rings. That alloy with the 50% lead over here we got, uh, supposedly, should, uh, should have a low enough melting point, even with the nickel, that the alloy will melt below the temperature that we're going to reach in our furnace. I'm going to add just a little bit of borax to absorb any oxides that have formed on the surface. All right, guys, well, here's our metal from those rings. And the little borax cover looks like it's turned kind of red. Um, but it was it was wild to look down in the crucible. You could see right through the borax cover. It was completely clear. And the metal was, there was bubbles forming on the top of the metal. I don't know what that was, but that was pretty cool. I've never seen that before. Um, so let's just turn this cone mold over. There's our little metal pyramid. I'm gonna look here. And I'll, uh, I'll get that borax slag chipped off of there and we'll see what we got here. But I'll, uh, I'll get this kind of cleaned up a little bit and get a fresh surface. I'll sand or grind down a little bit on one of the surfaces 
we'll take it in and get it uh, zapped with the XRF gun and see what metals are in there. All right, so I'm just taking this little hammer and I'm just chipping off the the cover, the borax glass on top. And it gives us a real nice, pretty shiny finish. But I don't know if you can tell, let's see if I can get the camera in here because it's still pretty hot. The borax is like this kind of deep ruby, ruby red. And what happened was whatever oxides were forming on the top of this uh, metal puddle in the crucible were absorbed in the, the borax um, that I put in there. And so whatever oxides make ruby red color with the borax, that's what we got. And I don't know if that's copper or nickel are the two that are supposed to be in there. Lead is also supposed to be in there, but I, I think lead makes a kind of a green oxide when it mixes with borax. So and what do you guys think? What, what, uh, what metal oxide forms this ruby red color with borax? I'd be interested to know. Leave a comment below and uh, let us know your thoughts. But I'll get the rest of this cleaned up and we'll get it zapped with the gun and see what we got. All right, so we're up over our 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. I think our metal puddle should be all molten by now. Yeah, there it is. You can see the cupel is turning a darker color. That's where it's absorbing the oxides. And as those oxides get absorbed, that metal puddle shrinks down. And it'll just leave the precious metals, the gold and silver, when all the base metals are oxidized away. Okay, we'll check on our bead here. It should be all done. I don't know if you can see it in there. But it's super tiny. Let me pull it out and uh, we'll take a look at it and get it weighed. So there's that little tiny bead in there is what we're after. So we'll let that cool down a little bit and then we'll get it uh, pulled out and weighed. Here's our little bead. Let's see if we can even get a weight. <laughs> point zero zero five. So point zero zero five. The other thing is, I don't know if you can tell, let's get in here a little closer. It's not very gold colored. So I don't know if there's silver in there as well. We didn't get any silver show up on the on the XRF, but let's just assume that it's all gold and we'll do some math and figure out how much gold's in there. That 0 0.005 grams. Okay, so check my math here. I did uh, 16.7 grams for our, what we had in our original rings. And we have 0 0.005 grams of assuming pure gold, which I don't think it is. And I did that math, I ended up with 0.03% gold by weight. So thanks guys for watching. 0.03% gold is not very much, but if you had enough of those rings, it might be enough for you to go after. And uh, I might keep playing with them and maybe in the future do a, a video on uh, trying to deplate the gold plating on the surface. So thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you on the next video.